Hey everyone, I'm Brandon Vineyard. I've been selling bank-owned foreclosures for over 18 years, and today we're going to discuss the foreclosure process timeline for the state of Florida, so stay tuned. Okay, I'll try to make this short and sweet, but also entertaining, fun, and informational, hopefully. But we're gonna talk about three stages of foreclosure. We're gonna go over a little bit of the pre-foreclosure part. And this is before the homeowner is officially served by the courts or the bank officially files. And we're gonna talk about the foreclosure case portion. And I use that term just because it's kind of the middle part. And last, we're gonna talk about the post foreclosure, which what happens when the property sells at the courthouse. You gotta remember, Florida is a judicial foreclosure state. And it's really simple, and just to remember that cases are handled by the court system. And in Florida, they're handled by the county circuit courts. So each county in Florida handles their own foreclosure case. Now, Florida does have one of the longest time frames for foreclosure in the country. Um, and in my 18 years, I've seen it just all over the place, but it's usually anywhere from six months to maybe a couple years. I have seen one case that went six years, um, the longest one in my career, and the guy really, really, really pushed it and fought the system, but it was just crazy. Okay, pre-foreclosure. Now, pre-foreclosure in Florida lasts a minimum of 120 days per the Dodd-Frank Act. The Dodd-Frank Act is formally known as the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act of 2010. Why 2010? Because it was under the Obama administration, which I'm gonna show you something in one second that's gonna blow your mind. But it targets the sectors of the financial systems that they believed caused the financial crisis of 2008, which include the banks, the mortgage lenders, and the credit reporting agencies. Well, did it work? I don't know. Check out this picture. Wow, there you go. You gotta remember, this picture was back in 2010. I know, it's mind-blowing. It really is. Okay, pre-foreclosure. This is a period of time before, and if I emphasize, before the property is sold at the courthouse. The process starts when the homeowner misses a few payments, and generally it's going to be between two and four payments. So what happens after the first missed payment? Well, most lenders in Florida allow a 15-day grace period. But after the 15 days, your mortgage is considered late, and they're going to assess a late penalty. In this example, it's 5%. Every lender is different. You need to make sure... Uh, if you are a borrower, you look at your own statement, but after 15 days, you're going to get a late penalty. So what about after 30 days? Well, 30 days is big because this is generally when the lenders are going to report you to the credit bureaus. But an interesting fact, federal law requires the bank to contact you no later than 36 days after the delinquency, according to NOLA. If a borrower fail, falls behind in payments, a servicer must attempt to contact the borrower to discuss the situation no later than 36 days after the delinquency. Um, that's pretty big. That's all because of the um, Dodd-Frank Act. So by the time your mortgage payment is 45 days late, lenders must appoint personnel to help you with loss mitigation. Once again, I just want to emphasize that every lender is different. Remember that there's no rhyme or reason. You're going to have some set structure in days, but every lender's policies are different. Okay. So after 90 days, you got to remember prior to 120 days, the bank cannot file foreclosure against you because of the Dodd-Frank act, but pre foreclosure review period, a servicer shall not make the first notice of filing required by applicable law for any judicial or non-judicial foreclosure process unless borrower's mortgage loan obligation is more than 120 days delinquent 
the foreclosure is based on a borrower's violation of a due on sale clause. And I'm going to do more videos and talk about due on sale clause. Uh, it's definitely something that we need to discuss. The servicer is joining the foreclosure action of a superior or subordinate lien holder. So just go back to and remember in Florida, 120 days is huge. But here's something that I want everyone to remember that at this point in the game or in the stage of the game, the homeowner still has legal ownership of the property. The bank has not took it back yet. And if it's tenant occupied, the tenant or occupants, they still have legal possession of the property. And I just want to note this because I do get asked this a lot. Um, in Florida, there's no way if you live in a property and you're foreclosed on, you're going to get evicted the day of the foreclosure sale. It's not possible. The seller doesn't have the title. So that's not going to happen. It's legally impossible. Okay, so let's talk about the mortgage and the note. Florida is a lien theory state. And all this means is that loan is secured by the property being purchased. At closing, the borrower is going to sign both a mortgage and a promissory note. And it's the promissory note that has all the loan details and all the borrower's legal obligations to repay the loan. The note's what's really, really important. And here's just a quick example of a, a copy of a mortgage in the state of Florida. All right, the next stage or step for the um, bank is going to be notice of default. Now, once the payments are far enough behind, the lender is going to file a civil action complaint. And that's going to be by sending out a written notice of default. And this technically marks the beginning of the foreclosure timeline. Now, since foreclosures are handled by the courts, the first thing the lender must do is file a notice of impending lawsuit. This is known as the Liz Pendens. That's why anyone looking up the foreclosure information of investors or agents, or if you're even the homeowner, the Liz Pendens is key. Once the Liz Pendens filed, you've been notified that you're being sued by the bank, basically. And everybody can see it at that point. And there's a quick example of one of what uh, one looks like here in the state of state of Florida, but in Escambia County. I mean, it's pretty simple. Um, now, the list pendants is filed at the clerk of the court's office in the public records. And it's Latin and means litigation pending. And like I said earlier, it just declares the lender has filed a lawsuit against the borrower. And everybody can see it because it, that, at this point, it's public information. Okay, so after that, the borrower is going to be served with a summons and complaint which begins the lawsuit. This is critical because this is going to start a huge time frame requirement for the owner, for the borrower. Once they're served, the borrower has 20 days to respond and this is critical, 20 days. If no answer is filed, then the lender can go straight ahead and file for the final judgment against the borrower. This makes the process much, much faster. If the borrower doesn't answer or the judge rules against the plaintiff at the preliminary hearing, then the summary judgment hearing will be fast tracked by the lender's attorney usually within 45 days. So basically if you don't go, you don't show up or you don't get on the phone, and you're a no-show, they're going to fast-track the case. And I, I think this is kind of important because I think it's something that a lot of people don't really understand, um, but it's exactly what happens. So I always tell people, if you want to fight in, for your home for some reason that it's different than a typical foreclosure in my area and you want to fight for it, then you can't let it be fast-tracked. And basically, fast track foreclosure is designed to fast track home foreclosures and close out homeowner rights quickly. Mortgage companies can file a show cause order soon after the foreclosure case is filed. The sh show cause order shifts the burden of proof to the homeowner to show why the bank should not be allowed to take their home. Foreclosure cases are expected to process are expected to process through the system with much greater speed 
Uh, right. In other words, you don't show, you don't say anything. They're going to make the process go much, much faster. Okay, the summary judgment hearing is where the attorneys for the lender will make their case against the borrower. It's at this meeting that the judge will rule and the final judgment, summary judgment, will be awarded and then filed. And folks, this is probably the most important thing. And I'm going to have another video up soon of strictly discussing the final judgment. But this right here is it. This is the most important part of the whole process. As far as I'm concerned, from an investor, from a real estate agent, this is the part that tells me everything that I want to know right here. The final judgment of foreclosure is a judgment issued by the courts against the defendant, aka the homeowner, in favor of the plaintiff or the bank. The final judgment details the amounts due the bank, including the principal, the interest, escrow credits, late charges, attorney fees, inspections, BPOs. Um, you'll see in the example, there's a ton of things on there that they're charging. Um, details the lien and lists the very important future sales date of the property. And basically the final judgment, it just sets the cost due the bank. Basically what they're going to get back at the foreclosure sale. So you can see in my example, I've got a couple of things highlighted real quick here. Um, on page one there, you can see the principal balance of this property was $429,000. And on the left, you can see the total. The total due as of this date is 571000 Now, that figure is going to go up from there too. Uh, and that's, in, that's another video in itself. But also, you'll see highlighted in yellow the date of the sale. And you'll see that this is a pretty recent video. But you're going to see exactly everything on the final judgment, as you can read below where I have highlighted. Taxes, insurance, valuations, late charges, interest on advances, preservation. Uh, preservation, look at that, not, almost nine grand. I mean, that's crazy. But the final judgment is it. It's the holy grail. It's got everything that you want to know about the property. This has what the bank has in it. You know, I get that question all the time. Well, this is going to show you. This is going to show you that this house is being here, let's see, at the auction for over $571,000. And they have it on the market. Um, they had it on the market for 300000 So, perfect example. Okay, the final sales date. This is typically 30 to 45 days out from the final judgment filing date. No, nowadays, you got to remember, a majority of the county foreclosure proceedings are handled online. Uh, Escambia County, where I'm at, they're online now. When I first started, we all went down to the courthouse, but now everything has changed. The only thing I want to say is make sure you research the county that you're in, you're investing in, you're buying in, you're selling in, no matter what you're doing. Make sure you know the rules, regulations, and laws in your county. Okay, so what happens after the property sells to the courthouse? Uh, and I say courthouse, but let's just say online. On the date of the foreclosure sale, what happens when it sells to either the bank or a third party? Well, Florida has a 10-day grace period after the courthouse sale before the clerk's office can issue the certificate of title. Now, this is the key. Besides the final judgment, the CT or certificate of title, that's the other thing that we're looking for. You can't do anything without the CT. You can't, I mean, the banks can't do anything. And remember, 10-day grace period. And that's if no objections are filed and all required documents and fees have been paid, then the CT will be issued and recorded. Um, we are not a redemption state in Florida, but this 10 days, this is the one chance the homeowner has to do something if they wanted to or anything it's basically what I've been told over the years. It's more con a correction period than anything. Um, I've never seen ho homeowners come back and get one. Our area is just not going to happen very often because generally the properties are just way, way too over leveraged. But is it possible for a homeowner to redeem their home after the foreclosure sale? Well, the true answer is yes. Owners might be able to redeem their home via the statutory right of redemption. Now, I'm not going to read this. I'll give you a little bit of time here. You can stop the video. You can read. But 
it's very important to remember that after this 10 day period, the homeowner is hosed. It's not happening. I mean, it's it, once the 10 days and they, whoever gets the CT, whether it's a third party being a investor or a bank, once they get that certificate of title, it's just like you sold it house in any other way. It's gone. And folks, this is when the eviction process can be started. That's why a homeowner cannot be evicted the day of the foreclosure sale. And I talk to a lot of people that feel or have been told that the day of the sale, they're out of the house. That's not going to happen. Not legally. There's no way possible. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Um, hit the like button. If you have any comments, please leave them. Appreciate it. Everyone, have a great day. Thanks.